Hi guys, uh, am I audible? Am I audible and visible? Okay, okay, great. So, okay, great. Hi Priyanka, Anshita, Yashwini, Priyadarshini. Great, great, great. Okay, okay. So today uh, we are here for, uh, you know, our foundation first lecture on our sociology foundation course. And uh, so tell me about yourself. All of you are uh, preparing for UPSC 2022. We'll still have a little bit of, in bit of introduction and we'll start. All of you all are uh, from uh, appearing for 2022. You can write your uh, attempt here and, uh, you know, whether you have sociology optional. Assuming that all of you have sociology optional and whether you have studied 2023 and just uh, you can write if uh, you have studied before or uh, you'll be starting fresh. Okay. So all of you 2023. So all of you are mostly freshers and you'll be starting in 2023. Fresh. Okay, okay, great. So today's lecture is on sociology foundation, um, as I said, and uh, we'll start with the first thing, how sociology emerged and all these things. So without delay, I'll just share my screen. So, yeah. Just a second, guys, just a second. I'll, I'll, I'll share my screen in a moment. Yeah, I'll, I'll share my screen in a moment.
हेलो हेलो Okay, yeah. I'll quickly share my screen. Just a second. Recording to turn. Okay. 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 Recording to turn. Okay. 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 Recording is enabled. Recording enabled. Okay. So. so the first lecture today we are having the first lecture and it's on the emergence of sociology so uh, so tell me something you can uh, you know whatever questions i'm asking you can reply through the chat box okay or you can unmute yourself since only seven of us are here so uh, so uh, what is sociology if i ask you uh, can anyone reply in the chat box so what is sociology what is sociology uh, if you can uh, anything one sentence a few words what what do you mean by sociology study of society very good study of society and what is the society society is everything that is around us okay so uh, human beings they constitute the society everything around us around us by that i don't mean that you know the air and earth and all these things are part of the society society is man made so anything that is social around us so man constitutes a society and society is made up of uh, human actions uh, so your uh, your political system is a part of the society uh, we are buying and selling with money that is a part of society economy is a part of society uh, you know your religion you go to a temple you go to a church or a mosque you go to pray mm, then you have different festivals religious festivals or you know we have uh, national festivals like you know, national uh, events like celebration of republic day independence day guys uh, do interrupt if you cannot hear because there is some program going on here uh, today is saraswati puja yesterday was so there is some program going on so uh, there might be a little bit of uh, disruptions a lot of noise so if you can't hear just uh, say in the chat box so anything that is uh, anything that involves human action religion be it religion be it uh, politics um, be the running of a country or you know the buying and selling of goods the entire economic system everything is a part of society because all of this involves human action yes what is not social is when what you are thinking that is not a part of society or you know what you are um, you know your your internal actions or you know uh, when, that is a part of your psychology because it is entirely concerned with you as an individual but anything your outwardly behavior way which involves other people that is a part of society so a teacher thinking you know thinking something about uh, about his teaching or whether a teacher is very in his mind is very cruel that is a part of psychology but when he is behaving in a class with his students he is showing a biasness towards some students he is showing partisan attitude towards certain students and he is being unkind to certain students maybe he is very good with boy students he is his attitude is not so good with boy with girl students so all these kind of behavior human interactions not only behavior human interactions which involves interaction involves two or more people so this constitutes the subject matter of sociology okay so mirror of us in society where humans interact very good puja priyadarshini very good i am really 
happy that you are coming up with such good uh, you know way of replying very good and for sociology optionals this is very very important that for sociology optionals you you should just knowing the subject is not enough you will have many sources from where you can read but how you represent it your grip over articulation of thoughts what you are thinking and how you are representing it uh to some extent a grip over language to some extent that is not important but your grasp over the thoughts how you are thinking on a particular issue especially when you are dealing with your paper 2 which has a lot of current issues how you thinking and their sociological thinking is very important we come to all of that so as the as a lectures progress but uh, you know that is very important and use you have to be that specific okay sociology is a study of society society is the way people interact you cannot say society is a world or something like that that is vague and that vagueness is not allowed sociology may be a very general subject very easy anyone can study anyone can understand um i think uh, the um, as i said yash yashashwini i'm really sorry the disturbance is from my side in my neighborhood there is some kind of program going on i'm really sorry guys so um if you if you uh, cannot hear at all do do let me know okay uh so that is society and that is the that is how you have to represent your your answers your clarity of thoughts that when you are told about uh, say uh, on on a particular issue you told about uh, say you have to talk about uh, you know rising violence against women in india so you have to think from that angle so where the rising violence in india why is this coming coming from patriarchal attitude women are seen as commodities and so and so so that is called sociological thinking and use of precise words is very very important in sociology okay now we'll start with the main lecture just a second okay okay so how, how did sociology emerge before when it's a study of society but why on suddenly we'll start society is times immemorial man was uh, a hunter gatherer then from there he started living in caves uh, started uh, depending on agriculture we don't society is not the study of that that is your history that is a part of your history because man did not start living as a social animal we did not have uh, you know um, institutions like religion uh, or uh, your political your king system and all these things so when people started living as a tribe or as a group and they thought that okay someone is the leader of the tribe or group um, then he is scared of nature so he starts worshiping nature he starts creating nature gods so uh that that is the beginning of social life but are we studying sociology from there we are not studying sociology from there that is not the starting point of social even though man has lived as a social animal for times in memorial when he started living in groups he started forming tribes he formed leader he started having a religion but we are not dealing with that aspect of uh man's uh life as a social animal we start with uh no 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 issues uh for being late no issues uh so we start with that period when people started studying society and started so studying society is the beginning of sociology and we are considering that uh and study of social society how suddenly they did not start studying society there were a lot of things that were happening a lot of changes that were happening and uh within the society and at the same time there was uh you know scientific uh, uh the sign uh, there was emergence of science and man saw like people saw there were scientists who saw that okay it can be something can be scientifically proven 
for example, if I uh, put acid in a base, it turns into salt. And it is proven every time I put acid in a base, it will become a salt. Acid plus base is equal to a salt. That is scientific knowledge. But when it comes to human interaction, it is not that obvious. It is not that obvious. You don't know, but still, still, these people said that no, these scientific principles can be uh, can be used in studying a society, in studying human interaction. For example, whenever um, the national anthem plays as an Indian, it's your duty to stand. Yes, there are exceptions. Supreme Court has given a judgment that it is not mandatory. That is that is a different thing, but in 90 to 95 percent of cases out of respect you will stand up so it's like proven with five percent error in 95 percent cases it's proven that you show citizens show respect towards you know their national anthem any any symbol uh, related to their identity as a as a national or as a citizen of that country or as as a you know, uh, belonging to a particular nationality. So that is their achievement. Sorry, that is their orientation towards that nation. They have a kind of attachment, emotional attachment. We are emotionally attached to a particular, uh, you know, uh, to, to patriotic songs because we have a history of uh, independence, of uh, fighting for our independence, and we've grown up listening to this so days. We all have, uh, you know, uh, Lata Mangeshkar, she died today. She's considered an icon and respected because we have a kind of emotional attachment towards her. 95% Indians have. So you said that you no know, social behavior is also predictable. It is like science, just like science with experiments, we can say. We know that uh, whenever there's a thunder and lightning, there is, um, you know, there's, there's current passing and that's scientifically proven. So Indians have respect for Lata Mangeshkar that is that can also be proven because in 95 percent cases 98 percent cases it's true so you can actually apply scientific principles in study of society and that is when you started studying society you started studying human interactions apart from this there were a number of other factors and uh, it started in europe the study of society started in europe and there were a number of changes, not only this scientific uh, thing, it was one of the major push factors, but there were a number of other things that were happening. And we'll see what is that. Today's class is on that. And what were the factors that essentially led to the rise of uh, socio the emergence of sociology, or the study of society as a subject. So uh, we're talking of a period which is later in history, or historians call it the enlightenment period. What do you mean by enlightenment? As a human being, you go through an enlightenment. When your entire thought process, your belief system, your values, your ideals, your the way you live, the way you uh, think, the way you act, the way you react, everything changes. That is called enlightenment. And that uh, Europe witnessed such a kind of a, uh, uh, such a change and that is called the Enlightenment or the Renaissance period. Uh, please try bilingual. By bilingual, uh, anyone, uh, how many of you are okay with, uh, if I say in English uh, or um, you want me to be bilingual? Dekho, uh, I can explain things in by uh, in Hindi, but I think terminology is to wo English mein hi regi. So I'll try my best to be bilingual. Anyone down south who cannot understand Hindi? Anyone from other from south or any other place who cannot understand Hindi? Okay, still for the benefit of all, I'll main Hindi maybe bolungi. So what happened was, ma'am, uh, Bolslam se WBCS or UPSC syllabus tutor mudde ki kono difference se na ki ma'am. Can can you can you be a bit louder? I actually cannot hear. Uh, ma'am, Bolslam se WBCS or uh, UPSC je syllabus ta sociology tutor mudde ki difference se na ki ek rokumi. 
সেটা জিজ্ঞেস করছে একরকম কিনা হ্যাঁ ম্যাম দেম তোমাদের যদি এক্সট্রা পোর্শনে তোমাদের সিলেবাসে এক্সট্রা যে পোর্শনটা আছে সেটাও কভার করে দেওয়া হবে থ্রু সাম সেপারেট ভিডিওস হুইচ ইউপিএসসি পিপল মে নট অ্যাটেন্ড ওকে বিকজ इट्स नॉट अ पार्ट ऑफ इट यू कैन अटेंड इट विल बी अ वैल्यू एडिशन फॉर योर यू नो फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग द डिसिप्लिन आई विल इनफैक्ट आई विल सजेस्ट यू अटेंड बट एवरीथिंग डब्ल्यू बीसीएस एक्सट्रा जे पोर्शनটা আছে সেটাও কভার করে দেওয়া হবে थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू ओके या আর বাকিটা তো সব একই আছে ওকে so uh there was this is called the enlightenment period this is the or the age of change the renaissance period as i said so what were the major changes that would happen economic change what what kind of economic change feudal to industrial ki feudal society se leke hum log ek industrial society ki taraf ja rahe hain aur iska matlab kya hai that feudal matlab it's related to agriculture और यू नो फ्यूडल लॉज रहते हैं जो अपनी लैंड लीज पे देते हैं एंड इट्स अ काइंड ऑफ लीजिंग सिस्टम और इट्स अ काइंड ऑफ यू नो टेनेंट सिस्टम अ पर्सन हु अ पर्सन लाइक वी हैड यू यू ऑल हैव रेड हिस्ट्री सो वी हैव जमींदारी सिस्टम सो एंड फ्यूडल सिस्टम इज नॉट न्यू ब्रिटिश ब्रॉट अबाउट सम चेंजेस वी हैड फ्यूडल लॉज so uh, uh before also so there was king had has is has is having a lot, lots of land he is making intermediaries so he is giving say 20 acres of land or you know 50 sorry not 20 acres maybe some hectares of land 100 hectares of land to a particular person and that particular person is actually uh giving it to some other person who is actually cultivating maybe 5 hectares or maybe 1 hectare or small or very small farmer maybe some acres or something like that so that kind of uh, so that kind of uh, landlords yes yes landlords uh these so that was the feudal system and you it was an agricultural uh, uh economy agrarian economy from there we changed we changed to an industrial uh system and what was this industrial system it was like now uh we have we don't have landlords anymore so landlords were replaced by capitalists who is a capitalist someone and listen to this part very carefully landlord was having it was based on land landlord or the feudal lord was having a lot of land in his hand and what was from feudal to industrial we shifted industrialist was not having land he had money and this money suddenly how there was this rise of industrialism and how did this capitalist suddenly have so much of money these there was a period before the industrial revolution in europe where agriculture boomed and due to this agricultural boom there was a lot of surplus now this surplus they sold in markets and they reaped a lot of money so there was a lot of money suddenly there was a lot of money in the hands of a, a group of people and they wanted to they invent, apart from that and then there was some scientific inventions which could actually make the process of production faster so uh these people felt that why not invest money we already have inventions like the spinning jenny so the these machines they are going to and you know all of you know that industrial revolution started with um with in in the in the textile industry in the process of production of cloth so uh they said that spinning jenny or water frame they are going to make it easier so why not invest money and then they reaped profits and whatever profit they got they again reinvested that and slowly slowly it expanded now what so what was the fundamental change from feudal system we move on to an industrial system so now feudal lord was most important and the tenant was uh, you know under him 
From there, we change to a new class of people. Who, are the, who is this new class? The industrialists. Suddenly, land loses its relevance. Land is no longer important because a factory, you just need a fixed plot of land, whether it's fertile and fertile, doesn't matter. A lot of questions. Every day, same time. Lecture is going to happen every day. Every day, every day we are not having, my dear. We'll be having on weekends. One class every weekend. Either on Saturday or on Sunday. So, um, okay. So, from industrial, uh, so the, these people were the new class of people. So suddenly land is now no longer important. See how changes are taking place. A particular, uh, don't ask so many questions. I will address all of your questions. Attend the lecture. Yes, we'll try and complete the whole syllabus of sociology. You'll see we are actually having a foundation course. These are a part of a few free lectures that we are having on YouTube. So all of it might not be published on YouTube. Uh, rest of it uh, we are having for our foundation our foundation batch that we have we'll give some of the lectures on youtube so basically this is the lecture this this is for our sociology foundation course foundation batch so okay um so what happened was so suddenly this plot of land becomes very important. And uh, a factory becomes very, very important. Uh, new class of people. Previously, tenant was uh, the person who was below the feudal lord. No longer there is tenant. That relation is lost. So a feudal lord has had a different relation with the tenant. In India, in Indian context, or maybe the tenant was dependent on him, the tenant would fall to his feet and say, uh, you know, if, if you see those uh, old movies, Mother India or all these things, Dobi Ghazameen, all these things, in Indian context, I'm talking, same was in Europe, the feudal lord always expect, exploited the tenant. So if you see these movies, you'll see that the tenant was a very poor person who is cultivating someone else's land. He doesn't have land. He cannot pay taxes because there is crop failure. And he goes and says to his feudal lord, my bab, uh, uh, de sakta, uh, you know, I, I cannot give the money, maaf kar do and all that. So sometimes he would forgive and uh, sometimes he would be beaten. So that kind of a social framework existed. An industrialist was totally different. Industrial revolution totally changed the scenario. It was more of a professional relationship, what we call professional relationship now. Maybe the, uh, the uh, industrialist, he, he doesn't even know his individual worker. He, he's working in an assembly. He's, he's going to office. He's going to his, uh, you know, karkhana or workplace, workshop, whatever. He's one of the many who is going for example, jute mills, if you, if you, if we have a lot of jute mills in West Bengal, who, which are, which have closed down or is in very bad condition. So that is typical of it. Like there is some, uh, they'll go in a fixed time, do one particular work that is given to him and keep on doing every day. He goes and does the same work. He comes back. He gets a fixed salary, which is not enough. He has to work for a lot of time, eight hours, 10 hours. There was, there was no fixed bar. 10 hours, 12 hours, no overtime, 15 hours. And he would be paid a fixed salary, which is definitely much less than the amount he needs to run his family. So that thing totally changed. It was not about, it was not dependent on your agricultural production and paying off rent and your productivity and all these things. It was, it, it was, it was a state of stagnation for the worker. He was, he was in, kind of in a trap where, from where he could not move out. So from feudal to industrial, the society changed, the economy changed, and that brought about a lot of social changes. We'll come to all of that. And from here, I'll just deviate. This is this gives birth to Marxism. We hear so much of Marxism, communism. This very this this forms the this social scenario gives the forms the foundation of Marxism. Monarchical rule to the rule of people. 
this is related to your political revolution. So feudal to industrial is your economic part. There are economic factors that were affecting. Monarchial to the rule of people. This was the political part. King was supreme. King would say, cut off the throat. You can cut off the, that person's cut, throat would be cut off without any, any kind of, now we have a judiciary. We go from lower court to higher court. And then also you have special appeal to the president. Then you have international courts, so many things. But in those days, King's will, King just felt that this, this person has done something wrong. So cut off his throat, put him into a, you know, into a, into jail where, you know, he would suffocate to death. He would run. And punishments were very, very cruel. You had the guillotine and all these things, rats. In France, it was very, a person would be torn apart. So that, that was it. Um, from monarchical. So king was supreme. King is sent by God. That changed. And then it felt that the rule of people. So people's will. Now we have democracy. So that was liberty, equality, fraternity. The will of people, brotherhood of people. Everyone is equal. No one is the son of God or no one is the divine. From divine origin theory, that divine origin is the king is directly a, a, a messenger or you know a descendant of God. The change to all human beings are equal. We are born equal. Someone just cannot become the king and say everything to us, dictate everything to us. Previously, what happened, there would be tribes. These tribes would fight among each other and one tribe would win and the head of the tribe would become the king. Slowly, that is how kingdoms expand. Kingdoms were formed and it expanded and you had kings and more kings and more kings. And finally, this had to stop. And this was the foundation of democracy. People's will know everyone is equal. So from monarchical to the rule of people, from religious supremacy to state power, Yashashwini, I can give, I, I'll, I'll uh, talk about all of the sources and all. As of now, I can say that if you follow these foundation lectures, your basics of sociology will be done. You don't have to, uh, you ha always have to develop on your answers, but your foundation will be done in sociology. That is for sure. If you attend the lectures. From religious supremacies to state power. Previously, in the medieval times, you had the supremacy of the church the church would decide everything and the king would the church was supreme the king would go and talk to uh, the pope of the church the archbishop but in medieval ages what happened was these churches were becoming so 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 very powerful that they were becoming very very corrupt anyone who tried to raise their voice against the church they would be killed Free opinion was not operated. And these people were becoming very, very corrupt. When there's a lot of corruption in a society, then that leads to a lot of inequality because some people are having more money by unfair means and some are not having money. Now, these people who are not having money, they know that those who are having money are very powerful. We cannot overpower them. But years of deprivation and deprivation and deprivation, it actually leads to a revolution. It happens in every society. People are fed up. That's the time the revolt. And that was the time this enlightenment happened through French revolution, through economic revolution. So different kinds of changes brought about the way the society thinks. Now from religious supremacy, supremacy of the church, it was the supremacy of the state, not the king, mind you, not a monarch. Supremacy of the state, the state will decide and the religion will not interfere. That is secularism, separation of the state from the church. State will not interfere and people, and sorry, religion will not interfere. The church will not interfere and the state will decide what is right, what is wrong. Religion stays as a place of worship, give, will giving moral values, that's all. It will not intervene into whom to punish, who is good, who is bad. No, these kind of interventions will not be there. And you had emergence of new classes. I've already spoken about this. Who are these new classes? The industrialists and the laborer class who were different from these tenants. So till uh, so this is about your enlightenment period. Now we'll see each of these changes in detail. Any questions till now? Any questions, guys? Any questions you have? If you don't have, you can write no. 
and O. Ma'am, boy, boy, like to follow her. I mean, who, who, boy, who, little, little, follow her. Okay. As of now, I'm going to say. ए लेक्चर्स गुलो फॉलो करो कौन कौन बॉय बॉय ते जहाँ ची एगुलो तो मैं बॉय डे बाइडे बोल ची ना बॉय ते जहाँ ची शेगलो ही इजी फॉर्मे लुसिट फॉर्मे इखाने बोल बाला होच्छे आर अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट की कुरे आंसर लिखते होए की कोर्टे होए की भी इम्प्रूव कोर्टे होए शेगलो ना पॉडे डिस्कस क Sorry, uh, we have students who are WBCS also, so from West Bengal. So for, with that, I, with them, I'm speaking in Bengali. I'm really sorry. Others, it's nothing uh, like that. I'm just saying that as of now, these lectures are fine. You don't have to worry about any book. You can this open any standard book of sociology. You have lot. You have Ignu notes. You have your. Um, uh, you know, other other books of sociology, like um, Emergence of Sociology is discussed in Harold Lombus and Holborn. So you can see, open any book, with new notes or uh, your Harold Lombus. These are the things that are discussed. Emergence of Sociology remains Emergence of Sociology in every book. They will not give you anything. Content is taken from book only, and I've just made it easy for you. And I'm explaining it. Anything you can read, my dear. Anything you can read, whatever source you have. But don't for for those who are starting with twenty, those who have attempts in twenty twenty three or twenty twenty two people. I will say, stick to one book. Don't you know? As of now, don't try to refer to five hundred references. You will see more or less. Take topic wise more. If you don't have a particular point, you can refer to a different book. But if you don't read the same topic and same points from five different books, doesn't make sense. Just a waste of time, and time is very limited. Okay, moving on. Just a second. So next, what we have is. Okay. So what was the first thing, as I said, scientific revolution. So there was a lot of changes that were happening. Previously, we did not have this concept of operation in India, though we had, but, uh, you know, it was, you know, anesthesia and all these things. So uh, these, these concepts developed and we knew that human body could be dissected. And when people dissected the human body, they saw that it is made up of component parts. We have cell, we have tissue, then we have nerves, we have other organs, we have bones, tendons, muscles, whatever. So similarly, society, so they started drawing inferences that, okay, society is also made up of component parts. We have individual who makes the family. Individual is I. When he stays in a family, it becomes we, that we is a part of society, family household, neighborhood, we have, then it comes to state, nation, village, rural, urban, uh, town, village and towns and cities. Then within each, you have your religion. There's a village. Imagine a simple village, a society. A village is a society. So we have, the village would have uh, shops, where people will go and buy and sell things. That makes your economy. It has a temple where people go and worship on occasions and on a daily basis also. Some people go. Uh, apart from that, uh, there is one village headman, maybe the Sarpanch or someone, who is uh, give, taking decisions. And there are there's a Gram Sabha that is sitting for taking decisions. Uh, so that is your polity. So all of these together make a society. Society is just made up of component parts. And each of them have an important role to play. If you don't have a religion, then people don't know that when, who do, you know, people pray because they are uncertain. They are fearful. So 
when they are in doubts, when they are in uh, uncertainty, they will, uh, they don't have anywhere to go to. If you don't have uh, shops, then where will they buy things from? Where will they sell things? If you don't have banks, then where will they deposit their money? Where will they take loan from? So all of these constitute important parts of the economy. So this they got from, they dissected the human body and saw that our body, it's not like God has made man. Of course, God has made man. Nature has made man. We had evolution and so on and so But it's not like suddenly you become a man and, you know, as it is shown in mythological uh, things. First, you are, you know, from a zygote, then you grow up inside the mother's womb, a, a, a baby grows up and slowly it becomes cells and tissues, they are formed, they join and slowly you become a full fledged and then, the, then, 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 then you're out, then you are, uh, you know, you're born and then you grow up slowly, mm, your milk teeth shed is shed off, you have new pair of teeth. Uh, then your voice changes in adolescence. So all these are cha changing. We are, society progresses through changes and it's made up of different component parts, just like the human body is made up. Then we have different chemical processes like oxidation reduction, where, you know, as I said, acid plus base is alkaline. So they give definite results. Next, the first major break from the entire system of ancient thought came to the work of Dutchman Nicholas Copernicus. So what did this man do? Before that, it was thought that, you know, uh, sun moves around the earth. Because we don't, you know, we don't realize that the earth is moving. We feel that the earth is stagnant and sun rises in the east and sets in the west. He first, and this is called the heliocentric theory, that the sun is fixed. Heliocentric means helium or helios, it refers to the sun. It is fixed. Earth is moving around it. Sorry. Uh, he gave the heliocentric theory that sun is fixed and the earth is moving around it. Yeah. So, so this changed that outlook that no, earth is not fixed. So if earth is not fixed, what we are living is in not fixed. So how can human life be fixed? How can society be fixed? And it totally changed our thoughts, our outlook. So this was a, the heliocentric theory was a major breakthrough. Then you have other scientific work, like works of Galileo Galilei, Kepler's, you have Kepler's theorem, Kepler's motion. You have you've read, must have read in your science and current affairs related to universe, planetary laws. Mm. Then you have uh, Isaac Newton's theory. So they all said that through experiment, scientific phenomena can be proven. So a group of people said that if scientific phenomena can be proven, then why can't social phenomena? Why can't social reality, social facts? Because these were challenging the old ideas. If you can challenge the fact that the earth moves around, the sun moves around the earth, then why can't you ch challenge the fact that no, the church is supreme. Why can't you challenge the fact that um, the king is the son of God? You can, right? I am not audible. Is it the case with everybody? Or is it only the problem with Rhea Singh? Guys, am I audible? Karan, okay, audible. Okay, yes. Okay. It's audible. So we are having a lot of women. It's it's a very women-centric class we are having now. Lots of women aspirants. Very good. Very good. Okay. Yes, yes, Karan, I can understand. I, I know that. But I said most are women. Very good. I appreciate all of you. All of you are uh, very serious aspirants. That's why you're sticking onto the class. I just said we have the proportion of women is more in today's class. Okay, good. Um, so old ideas were challenged and alternatives were suggested. 
So if these alternative ideas could be proven and repeatedly verified, they were accepted. If not, new solutions were sought. So they were considered accurate. As I said, challenges. If you can challenge, then why can't you challenge the king? Why is the king supreme? Why will he see everything? If he tells that cut a man's throat and cut a man into pieces, why can't that idea be challenged? So science, actually, people started drawing inference from science. That's how it happened. There's some problem in my laptop, which is making. Yes, my screen is shared. Anshita Giri. Can, is my screen visible to everyone? Others, can you see my screen? Okay, okay, okay. Anshita, I think there's some problem in your connection. Screen is shared. Others can see. You kindly check your, you can go out and you can join again. Or you can, just a second. Okay. Next we come to other scientific revolutions that were happening. And this is another very important thing. Darwin studied, Darwin went to Galapagos Island, which is like a hotbed of biodiversity. And he started studying different animals, different forms of life. And he studied human evolution. From human evolution, you know, first man was an ape. From there, he became becomes a man. So he traced the origins of human species to some ape-like ancestors. So he said, he, he said for the first time that it's not like that the king was born as, you know, with, uh, you know, uh, you know, that, that, uh, that throne and that gold throne and, you know, beautiful and uh, decorated dresses and he comes and sits on a throne. No, all of us were, came from apes. So we were all apes. From there, we came into what we have all these very good and decent and all these sober and polished behavior and all these fashion and style basically we came from apes everyone was everyone came from apes so he and that actually challenged that idea before that people felt, felt that okay god created the king and the king is supreme because mm, uh, he was born like that and all but then people felt that this idea challenge that if man comes from ape then all of us are apes and all of us are equal and this evolution evolutionary theory that man traces his origin from apes it was applied to society so people like august koth he's called the father of sociology we'll start read about him in our next lecture uh, august koth said he he uh, defined that society has also progressed. It's not like suddenly we have the society as we have now. It has gone through stages, just like from a man has gone through different. First, he had a tail, then slowly he got rid of the tail. The tail became smaller and smaller with evolution. So, um, so you know, just similar way. Uh, society has also progressed and it has progressed from uh, you know a very primitive where uh, uh, people would fight for you know in, in, in the vedic age imagine there was there was fight for cows you know slowly that changed from hunter man we have caveman then we have the agricultural man and then you know in vedic societies there were for, from from fighting over cows you suddenly have fight over uh, land and now we don't have these battles what kind of battles do we have taking away each other's market china is still coming and taking india's market we don't go and fight territorial wars are there one king going and fighting with another king uh, for taking control over area that is rare now it's on a different field, on, a, on, on an economic field. Right? So uh, that's how society changed. And August Koth said that he, he said that 
society in he, he gave this famous theory the law of three stages we'll read about it in the next class don't worry uh now listen to what i'm saying so law of three stages he said that theosophical stage where man believed in one supreme creature called god metaphysical state where he started believing in different forces of nature and he started worshiping different forces of nature for example uh the worship of rain you'll still find you know in in coastal communities people worship these forces of nature like the rain or you know other forces of nature earth mother earth we say so equating it to human relationships so uh august fourth and then final stage is the scientific stage uh where people rely on scientific methods scientific studies experiments and uh, try to find the scientific basis of everything yes yes absolutely absolutely karan there's some problem guys are you understanding any question any doubt is it clear to you do you do uh, is it is it making sense to you you can you can share your thoughts meanwhile what is the difference between i and me share the slides screen sharing is enabled i and me i and me in sociological context acha i and me is um, herbert meets theory we will read mead will come much later we will do that theory not don't ask it now kar because now if i start teaching mead it's difficult we are starting with emergence of sociology others will not understand priyanka shah what uh, what problem exactly any 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 problem in understanding i uh priyanka choudhary i cannot understand screen sharing is enabled what 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 are you saying please share the slides bujhte problem hocche is it is it banglay bolle better exactly kon jayga ta bujhte problem hocche उटिकारिन मैम आई वांट टू से कि आप जो स्लाइड्स जो आप पढ़ा रहे हो ना अभी वो स्लाइड्स शो करो वो शो नहीं हो रही अगर शो नहीं हो रहा है माय डियर तो आपकी कनेक्शन में प्रॉब्लम है मैं स्लाइड्स कांस्टेंटली शो कर रही हूं बाकी सबको दिख रहा है स्लाइड्स अदर्स कैन सी एवरीवन कैन सी द स्लाइड्स मैम स्लाइड्स दिख रही है पर एक ही स्लाइड्स दिख रही है द फ्रेंच रिवोल्यूशन सिर्फ ओनली फ्रेंच रिवोल्यूशन इज शोइंग यस मैम बट आई एम आई हैव साइंटिफिक रिवोल्यूशन इन फ्रंट ऑफ मी जस्ट चेक आई विल चेक आई विल चेक आई विल चेक just a second
Now, can you see my screen? The scientific revolution. Yes, ma'am. I'm sure. Sure, na? Acha, acha, acha. Me ko samaj bhi nahi aaya. Pichli wale slides aapko ek baar dekhna hai. Yes, ma'am. Pichli yes, revolution aur pore chekulo bolte hain, chekulo ko dekhi thi. Okay, okay. I, I, I'm really sorry. There was some problem in the system. Because in my screen, on my screen, it was showing scientific revolution. Just a second, just a second. Give me one second. Okay, you see this slide now. This is related to the scientific revolution I'm discussing now. Uh, there is some uh, error in the system. For, that's why, uh, you know, uh, slide. It, it's taking a little bit of time in changing the slides or maybe they're showing the old slides. Okay, so I have uh, uh, discussed all these things like the scientific revolution, mm. uh, how, how it changed the image and how from ape man we became... Um, how societal uh, evolution august quote is all these i have not added because it is i'm just saying giving you extra information and uh, august quote and all these things we'll study in the next class just a second guys just a second just a second Can you see from the Microsoft thing? Because a uh, slide share is. Oh. Can you see the screen? I'm, I've, I've stopped the slide sharing. Guys, can you see the screen? Yes, ma'am, screen to back at Okay, next we move on to, from scientific revolution, uh, we move on to commercial revolution. So how did this commercial revolution take place? Okay, okay, great. So next we move on to commercial revolution. So commercial revolution took place in the field of uh, commerce, you know, trade, trade and commerce. So it's a series of events that took place much before your Renaissance. It was a series of ev events that took place between 1450 to 1800. So what was this? You know that British established colonies here. Before that, we had Portuguese advent of Europeans, everyone has studied. So uh, you had uh, the coming of Portuguese, you had, then you had the Dutch, then you had uh, English, so on and so forth. So these people, before that, there was uh, like, uh, the European powers, they thought that they will establish markets in other countries. And they started exploring sea routes. Because Venice and Genoa, these were big, two very important cities. Venice and Genoa, very important cities. Surplus, yes, but that surplus mainly triggered industrial revolution. So actually, Venice, these trade that was happening. So before industrial revolution came your commercial revolution. Uh, one of the factors were like Venice and Genoa were very important trade centers and all trade that happened with the East Trade with the East is not new. Everyone who has studied uh, history know that you, even the, with the, during the Byzantine Empire's times, you had trade with India with 
trade trade in porcelain and silk in indus valley times you had trade trade is not a new phenomenon so these they wanted to explore new routes and they explored these sea routes and vasco da gama came to india and landed in calicut and uh, uh this person uh, sorry christopher columbus he wanted to dis uh, discover the orient but landed up in america and that's how america was founded so these people started discovering new routes and trade has started happening through trade routes so they felt that what are the unexplored areas where we can sell our products not only within because the national thing was stagnated the within their nation the market was getting stagnated so i have to look for foreign markets so what are these places where these things are not available so it can be in the africa africa people are poor orient people are rich you have kings and all these people in china in india malaya all these places so they discovered and it it has good sea connectivity so that's how trade expanded now a, a a group of people they were reaping these surpluses yes you were right agriculture was running on a surplus for a very long time so they started giving loans and that developed banking the practice of banking they developed this is bankers or you know um this this uh, people who would give loans uh, private bankers and uh, if you have studied history you know the importance of bankers like sirajuddola umi chand and uh, you know um, uh, who's a uh, durlab set and umi chand they were basically heavy bankers and that led to the downfall of the bengal dynasty of sirajuddola so expansion of banking happened these people would give private uh, loaners they would give loans and uh, then there was there was this coming of you know finance companies or banking companies uh in europe and uh, these people were they were joint stock companies two three people coming and putting their money and establishing a company and that gives loans so you have loan for starting a business you start your business economy is running good you do a lot of production what do you do with that production you don't have enough market you take a ship put low goods in a ship and sell it to orient to the east the people have lots of money here but they don't have products so what do you do they they buy it and your product you can sell it at any market now people here don't know the price of the things so very cheap things you produce there and come and sell it here in the east that's how the commercial revolution happened and there was a rise of this new middle class previously in france we had these estate systems we'll talk when we talk of french revolution so these new middle class people who were these new middle class so they were these people of these bankers who were giving money because they were not the people uh, belonging to the nobility they were not uh, you know these uh, kings men working under the king or they were not religious people like these clergy clergy means people belonging to the church so who were these people these people were these bankers these small companies that were being taken up and you know that whenever there is a very strong middle class middle class is the person who thinks who revolts because they have knowledge they want to change of poor people how can you poor tenant he has to think of feeding his you know uh, how to get two square meals a day how can you think of changing but the middle class has ideas ideologies and they think of changing so every society when it changes a formidable force a very big force is the middle class so it was this middle class was expanding okay so that that was the commercial revolution then you have the industrial revolution screen is visible now industrial revolution screen is visible yes ma'am okay great so this began around 1760 so commercial revolution happened much earlier 1760 it took place on a large scale and that's the time if you related to your history you will read in your modern history that east india company was established sometime in 1600 they came here sorry they came around 1500 something they came uh, they established factories in there there when industrial revolution started in 1760 then there was mass production so by 1800 and 1833 charter and your 1853 charter the doors are to their monopoly ended why do you think the monopoly of the east india company ended 
the monopoly of the east india company ended because there was mass production in um, in england and now everybody wanted to go and uh sell their products abroad why only east india company do all the benefit do all the business and that is when the monopoly of the company ended through the charters uh, that they signed with the british government with the with the crown these uh, the east india company's monopoly ended and there were new inventions as i said these inventions spinning jenny arkwright water frame mule by samuel crompton these are different machines you can google it up and see the images just to make the process of production easier and there was heavy production it was less time consuming yes yes industrial market demand yes that actually expanded traditional emphasis on land exchange i've discussed all these points and money became very important factory mode mode of not tradition mode of production factory mode of production as i said people would go and cultivate their own land bef before now what happened not own land land of the feudal lord how it changed there was a definite space which they call factory he is given a particular machine or maybe three people working on a particular machine he has a particular role he will go he will report on a particular time say 8 in the morning and he won't be won't leave the factory or his workshop before 9 or 10 at night so that changed and these factories would be located in urban areas so places like manchester where industrial revolution started revolution means that there was mass production It totally changed the way production was done. production cloth would be produced before that also before industrial revolution but not on such a large scale on a smaller scale only for uh, you know, local markets and these were so people so now a farmer who is not getting uh, you know agri land to uh, you know five farmers would uh, fight over one piece of land now they know that okay we are extra two people go and join the industry so from their village they go to city and town and they start forming slums small small areas where you know these ghettos ghettos means you know 20 people living together together slums basti that you know the concept 50 people living together maybe one toilet so that's how it started because these people were given very very meager wages very small wages which was not so they migrated with their families their wife and this from here so this is how sociology developed you go and work in a factory you have uh, you are paid very little money so you cannot take your your brother your sister your mother your father and go and um, stay in a urban area so what you whom you take is your immediate family your wife and your child so from a joint family you become a nuclear family this is how changed so this system of joint family to nuclear family is not new it started with industrial revolution another thing started from industrial revolution that is the concept of pollution and that is why whenever you read your climate treaties there is one clause mentioned pre industrial level 2 degrees below pre industrial level why pre industrial level because that was the time when this factory mode of production started and you had this heavy suit and you know uh industry affluence uh, you know coming out of these chimneys and that polluted the environment there was there was called the london smog black soot coming out of factories so this was the change this was the economic change commercial revolution was another economic change scientific revolution was scientific change we have political change now and this comes through french revolution as i said the monarch was the supreme person Mm, church was supreme king was the son of god all these ideas were being challenged because there was a lot of oppression there was a lot of poverty inequality people would be given very brutal punishments anyone trying to raise his voice against the king saying that the king is doing it wrong would be killed and killed in a very brutal way put in a guillotine put in a put on a rack shooting and all or you know capital punishment phasi and all these things are much later it was brutal it was barbaric one man punishing another man so it it was that barbaric and uh, so this actually so these prisoners of the king of the prison of bastille they revolted against the oppression and there was poverty and you know that when queen mary and there was a lot of problems within the royal family and when this uh, king queen 
uh, Antoinette when she was said that people don't have money to eat, they cannot uh, earn their bread. So she said that if you don't earn, if you don't have bread, why don't they, you give them cakes? You can understand how how much insensitive a queen is. Like she doesn't know the reality. They there was so much of corruption. They would lead lavish lives. A section of people are cannot eat. They are dying, and the king is leading a lavish life. And the queen is saying, if they cannot earn their bread, then let them have cakes. So that actually all these factors and these people. There was rise of new ideas, new political ideas, and philosophers like Montesquieu. like uh, you know voltaire rousseau they they spoke of the right of people so what were these ideas montesquieu in his book the spirit of the law you can actually directly quote these names and the names of the book in your answers held that there should not be concentration of authority so king is not judiciary king is not legislative king is not executive now we have different wings if legislature makes a wing the it can be challenged in the supreme court if the legislature makes a law it can challenge the supreme court and the high court so there should be separation of powers this being brings us to the idea of separation of powers started with french revolution whatever political uh, you know ideology we have so, so secularism democracy or you know uh, separation of power and all these things everything has its uh, origin in french revolution lock he said that every individual has certain rights it cannot be taken away by authority we have our fundamental rights he has the right to live you cannot just just because you want a person to die a person dies right to property he has the right to have property not of every property belongs to the king that is not true right to freedom he can think he can write he can express his views these are basic rights and he should have it he also believed that any ruler who took away these rights from people should be removed from the seat of power and replaced by another ruler who protects so basically the state should protect the rights of people another philosopher voltaire he said that religious toleration just because i am a protestant this was the time when protestant and christianity they were fighting just because i am a protestant we will not go into the history of protestantism that is different uh that will take up the time of the class but it was a different uh, group among the christians who did not believe in idol worship who were catholic uh, ideology or the oppression of the church so these protestants uh, fighting with christian the islam we had the holy wars the jihads uh, sorry the crusades so these people the fighting of the christian with the um, with the with the turks with the ottoman turks that who are muslims so he said that there should be religious tolerance i am a christian or you are a muslim or you are a hindu doesn't mean that i kill you so there should be religious tolerance and freedom of speech just because i say that the king is doing wrong i my head will be cut off that's not the thing stood for rights of individuals for freedom of speech and expression we we shout about freedom of speech now but it the basis was formed here when they opened the gates they killed the royal just because we had this just like we had you know uh, the sepoy mutiny it was on a larger scale and that sepoy mutiny was not exactly fully successful but this was immensely it laid the basis they stormed the gates of the bastille prison all prisoners they were all political prisoners they were all kept in the prison because they spoke against the king they said that this is right and this is wrong and then they killed the royal uh, army and killed the king and the queen and they established democracy Rousseau, in his book, he was another philosopher. Social contract. So, what is social contract? So, he said that state, you know, the its state is formed on the basis of social contract. People have a contract with the government. What is democracy? It's based on social contract. What is this contract? I will give vote to you. I will elect you to for five years. In return, you have to give me welfare. What is welfare? You have to make sure that I have the basic infrastructure facilities. you have to ensure that i have you know social security i get pension old age pension i get uh, if someone dies in my family if i am a if some if if a woman becomes a widow then she gets some kind of security you give me education you give me health facilities you give me so basically you look after my welfare and i vote for you so that is a contract between the citizens and the government so government is based on 
social contract the state is based on social contract this is the basis of social contract theory it's a contract it's not like i am the king and i will remain the king for 200 years and i can kill people i can uh, you know bring take, bring any woman to my harem i can uh, do anything with anybody no that's not it that's not the basis of democracy so this is the foundation of the modern state so all these actually change the way uh people look at it and this this entire set of events culture industrial revolution french revolution commercial revolution scientific revolution all of these changed the way we look at society we started applying scientific principles we have we we, we spoke of evolution law of three stages we spoke of economy changed uh there was industrial and this not only created new ideas and thoughts this created new problems industrial revolution created new problems and that gave birth to new thought body of thought called marxism scientific evolutionary theory gave gave birth to a new school of thought called positivism we'll see all of that in the next class so this is all for today's class this is about your emergence of sociology and uh, you can open any standard book you will see these points discussed any doubts any questions you can ask did you like what was taught or anything any anything you want to say anything you want to share you can next class next week every weekend we are going to have these classes how we get this pdf it will be posted on the telegram channel ম্যাম আমরা কি মানে প্রত্যেকটা উইকে একটা করে টপিক কভার করব সরি 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 একটু জোরে বলো হু ইজ দিস প্রিয়াঙ্কা यस ম্যাম হ্যাঁ বলো ম্যাম বলছিলাম যে আমরা কি প্রতি উইকে একটা করে টপিক কভার কভার করব হ্যাঁ সিলেবাস वाइज যাব দেখি মানে প্রত্যেক ক্লাসে একটা টপিক তো কভার হবে দুটো টপিকও হতে পারে বড় টপিক হলে একটা টপিক সো एवरी ক্লাস উইল ট্রাই এন্ড কভার ওয়ান টপিক ওয়ান টপিক অবভিয়াসলি it's a small topic we can go for two topics also okay ma'am okay any other doubts questions did you like the class anything you want to say suggestions anything ma'am ekta ye chilo je ektu jodi banglay bolen mane kichu kichu jaga we will see to it if get this pdf uh, it will be posted on your telegram channel most probably we'll see to it but we'll get you'll get the pdf and this lecture will also be on youtube any questions or we'll end the session can be asked from this unit and how we can answer it see your previous year question you have direct questions from this area briefly discuss the emergence of sociology how did industrial revolution play a role in the emergence of sociology how did uh, you know intellectual forces then you have to write about these rousseau and uh, voltaire and locke and all these things or you know how scientific uh, uh, inventions changed the way people think of society such kind of questions you see your previous year questions both wbcs and upsc direct questions and this is a very easy area you can definitely attempt question from it every year you have questions from this area in upsc what were the factors responsible for the emergence of social uh, emergence of sociology such kind of questions how you can answer it this is a foundation lecture we'll we'll discuss that we'll discuss that emergence of sociology happened in europe you cannot interlink with india if it's a question on emergence of sociology you cannot interlink with india everything you cannot interlink with india which book is good for sociology harold lombus and holborn uh for those who are looking for you know book suggestions in our sociology group the academy sociology we have a schedule of our 
answer writing program that is running already. There we have posted a book list also. You can see from there, from which book, what? The Diademy Sociology Group. Any other question? I guess no other question. Then we'll uh, end the session. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Okay.